So when I was working for um, the dental office, I was raising my son. And of course, back then in the 70s, salaries weren't really what they are today. And you might not think that anyway, but your money did go a little bit further, but I was still not getting paid enough. And I only had enough to pay for rent and maybe just buy a little bit of food um, because my son was my priority. You know, I would pray, read the word, but I was still kind of like living in, I wouldn't say poverty because I visited other countries and we're not poor people until you leave the United States. But in my situation, I was not living the, that normal standard of having all my basic needs met. In my prayer time, you know, the Lord led me to move back to New York. I was living, living in New Jersey at the time my son was born in New Jersey and I lived there I was dating this man young he was young like me uh, and I moved in with him like most of us do right we meet someone that we think we love and that's the time that my girlfriend had invited me to church I was living with this young man now mind you I'm filled with the Holy Spirit I come home I'm a completely changed person I was laying down next to him one night and I heard my name being called my spirit i knew that it was god calling me to not sleep in that bed anymore to go sleep alongside my son my son was about four years old so i slept in my son's room and uh, i remember a time that i was taking a shower and I, now mind you i'm still living with my boyfriend now he's frustrated he doesn't know what's going on because i'm not sleeping with him anymore he comes into the bathroom and he opens the curtain really like violently tears the curtain open I, actually a couple of the rings fell off right and i immediately covered myself where i didn't do this before but i felt this shame and it's like oh my god he just violated my privacy and he had the most beautiful hazel eyes and that's one of the things that captivated me but this time his eyes were black and i looked directly into his eyes and he looked directly into mine and his eyes spoke hatred. He glared at me like he was going to kill me. And that was the first time that I came in contact with the enemy of my soul. He walked out of the bathroom and I started shaking, you know, the aftermath of that, that terror that I felt. And that's when the Lord orchestrated my move out of that apartment. And there was like a, a real urgent knock at my door, at the kitchen door, and I answered and it was my neighbor. And she said to me, I don't know what's going on, but I was told that I have to move and I have to leave you the apartment and the rent is paid for the rest of the month. And she left, she left, the, there was actually some furniture in that apartment that she left. So I moved out of Dave's apartment into that apartment and I was only there for like a month. It, it was weird for her, but for me, I knew that God was making a way because he did tell me in prayer that not to worry about how I was going to move because he was going to make a way and th that's scripture he makes a way where there is no way the Lord allowed me or made a way for me to move back to New York and I was like how am I gonna move I didn't have a car but I had a lot of stuff in my job there was this handyman this handyman was known to be very selfish he wouldn't do favors for anybody but he said to me hey you need any help this man who never helped anyone offered to help me. So he moved me from New Jersey to the Bronx to live with my father because I didn't have a place to live. And my dad said, okay, you can come and stay with me. The Lord does things in such a timely way. And he enabled me to move.